Welcome to Cybersecurity Workshops and this session on network fundamentals. So we are in this Virginia Cyber Range course called Cyber Basics and uh, we're discussing module two. So in the last uh, discussion, we talked about an introduction and network concepts. We looked at local area networks, wide area networks, the internet. We talked about what a network is and, um, and uh, how the different components of the network sort of fit together. Now we're going to go a level deeper and discuss some further fundamentals of computer networking. And so here's our learning objectives. So in this session, we're going to compare networking conceptual models. So we're going to talk about layered network models. And, um, you know, the, the, the first time through this, it's, it's going to be, um, uh, you know, obviously, uh, probably new information for, for most of us. Um, so it may not click right away. I would encourage you to, um, you know, as we discuss more of, the, of this uh, networking, uh, more of these networking topics and how uh, networks work together to function, um, I would encourage you to sort of come back to this and then watch it again, and it'll probably make a little bit more sense. And then later, we're gonna actually use some tools um, in uh, the Virginia Cyber Range to actually look at some network traffic. And, and once you actually look at these network packets and the different components of a packet, um, I, th I think some of this will make a lot more sense, but this will really set the stage for, um, for more of our later networking discussions. We're gonna identify uh, some network protocols and we'll talk first about what a protocol is and then we'll, then we'll talk about some of these specific protocols used in the internet. And, um, and then we're gonna just look at some different tools that you can use in Windows to, to um, gain some information about, about your network. Okay, so we're gonna talk about layered models. And the layered models really provide this framework for, um, for how different um, uh, components of the network work together. And the cool thing about the, 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 this layered, mo uh, this layered uh, um, network uh, uh, model framework is, is that you can, you can um, plug and play different protocols at different levels and, um, and the whole network can continue to work even though, even though you're, you're using different um, you know, protocols at different times on, on different levels. And so the, the classic model is this thing called the OSI model, the Open Systems Interconnect model. This was developed as part of the ARPANET. So last time we talked about the internet and the precursor of the internet being the ARPANET. And when the ARPANET was developed, this protocol hierarchy was developed and this was the OSI model. And really the OSI model is very much a conceptual model for, um, for these different layers of, of protocols that you might see in a network. Now the actual, in the actual functioning of the internet, we use a simpler model that's called the TCP IP model. And, and um, last time we talked about um, the TCP IP protocols and those two protocols sort of form the foundation of the TCP IP model. So here at the transport layer, you have TCP and at the internet layer, you have IP. Those aren't the only protocols that can be used at those layers, but those are, those are the primary protocols used in the internet at, the, at, those, at those two layers. And then down here at the, you know, at the host network, um, this is often divided up into two chunks. So you'll often see the data link layer and the physical layer. And so we'll talk about the protocols used at, at you know, at the data link layer. And then um, up here at the application layer, these are our applications. And you've, you've probably heard of protocols like like HTTP or HTTPS, and that's a protocol that's used uh, for, for uh, web pages. Okay, so, so as we move on, this, this protocol hierarchy uh, should make a little bit more sense. Okay, so, um, so before we dive into the various layers, let's just talk for a minute about network protocols. Protocols are rules of communication between network devices. And it's a, it's a clearly stated set of rules for communicating devices on either end. And you know, these, are, these are defined in the operating system and they're very specific and, and um, 
you know, if these if these protocols aren't implemented properly in, in different operating systems, then those the, the then the network components on those different operating systems are not going to communicate with each other. So the protocols are very clear and specific and need to be implemented in a certain way. And so um, some some of these protocols apply to directly connected devices. So like Ethernet for wired networks and Wi-Fi for wireless networks. Those are, those are devices that, that talk directly to each other, right? So last time we talked about a, a laptop computer that connects to a wireless access point, those two devices are directly connected and they're gonna communicate over this Wi-Fi protocol. And then some of these protocols apply to end-to-end -to -end communications, right? So the HTTP protocol, my, my laptop is not going to communicate directly with the web server that it's, that it's gathering information from. There's a whole network between me and that web server. But that HTTP protocol is going to define the communication between my web browser on my laptop and my web server that, you know, whatever website I'm trying to go to. And we'll see that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk through an example of that in a few minutes. These protocols define specific formats for messages exchanged between the two systems. And, um, and some, of these, some of these protocols are fairly simple. You know, the, the, the messages are, are not very, there's not a lot of messages, they're not very robust. It's just a, a simple communication system. Some of these are very robust, so they, so they can support things like acknowledgement, so to make sure that the receiving system received the message that I sent. There's support for data compression, so we can compress uh, uh, data so that it doesn't take up as much bandwidth on the network. Uh, and then other mechanisms for efficient and reliable communication. And we're not gonna get into those kinds of details, but just understand that these protocols define um, um, you know, these sorts of, of mechanisms that um, provide you know, reliability in our communications over the network. And so here's my little example. Consider a protocol for a voice telephone communication. You know, when, when, somebody, when, when somebody calls you and, you and you answer the phone, you know, and you pick it up and you say hello, or, you know, you say something. And, um, you know, if you don't do that, then the person on the other, uh, other end of the line is, is going to be a little bit confused, right? They're, they're not even going to recognize whether you answered the phone or not. And so that's an example of, of sort of an informal protocol. And it's the same with these protocols, right? When you, can, when you connect to, to a, a web server, there's a specific message that is going to be in that communication to that web server that is going to indicate what you want from that web server, you know, a particular web page or whatever. And then, and then the web server is going to, is going to, you know, know what to do based on that protocol message that you send it. So we'll start at the very bottom layer of this protocol hierarchy. And so here I, I up in the upper right hand corner, I have the, the protocol picture again. So at the very bottom, we have the physical layer and this is how physical devices are connected to each other. So at the physical layer, we have things like, you know, we have, we have bits transmitted over some uh, uh, medium that could be a cable or it could be wireless. And it could be one of many different kinds of cables, right? So in the old days, most computer communications used the coaxial cable. It's the same stuff that you see like in your, in your cable network or your cable TV connection is the coaxial cable. Nowadays, we use um, more of this twisted pair, so unshielded twisted pair or shielded twisted pair or even fiber optic communications. And so, you know, there's some, there's some uh, obviously some decisions you make when you're selecting these different kinds of, of uh, network communications. Um, you know, you think about which is the most secure, which is the least secure, um, you know, which meets my bandwidth requirements. So if I want to send a whole bunch of data through a, a communications medium, then, then fiber optics is usually going to be the best way to do it. Which is the most practical to install? Well, um, you know, fiber optics is probably the, the highest bandwidth and it's probably the most secure because it's light traveling down a wire instead of an electrical signal traveling down a wire that can probably be easily eavesdropped upon. But um, it's also very impractical to install, right? It's difficult to work with fiber optic cables. You can't, you know, with a wired connection, you can sort of cut the wire in the middle and you can twist the ends together and make everything work again. But with fiber optics, it just doesn't work that way. Then, of course, the first step in, in network troubleshooting is to make sure that the cable is plugged into the back of the computer if you're using uh, um, cabled network connections. The next layer up the hierarchy here is the data link layer. So um, 
the data link layer is what provides for point to point communications. And so um, the, the, the protocols that are gonna be used at the data link layer, I've already mentioned are protocols like ethernet. So that's when I have a cable plugged into the back of my computer and then the, and then that, the other end of that cable is plugged into a switch. That is generally gonna be an ethernet communications. Um, or I might be communicating over Wi-Fi, but the primary uh, um, protocols for data link layer communication are Wi-Fi or this protocol called ethernet. And the devices that are used at the data link layer are things like switches. That's sort of the primary data link layer device. So you might have multiple computers connected directly to a switch. Okay, now we're moving up a layer in the protocol hierarchy to the network layer. And this, the, at the network layer, we, we deliver data between hosts, possibly on different networks. Right, so here in the, in the data link layer, these devices are all on the same network. They are, they're all connected to the same switch, right? And we talked last time about local area networks, that, that those devices communicating with each other in a local area network, that's gonna be generally data link layer communications. When we, when we have computers on different uh, networks that need to communicate, then that has to happen on this network layer. And the primary protocol used at the network layer is IPv4, IP version four. So that's a particular version of the IP protocol. It's been around for a long time. It's these 32 bit addresses. And if you've ever seen an IP address, this might look familiar, right? 172.16.1.250, it's these, it's called, it's four octets. It's 32 bits broken up into groups of eight bits. And so you usually um, display them using this octet um, sort of, sort of, um, uh, um, uh, you know, depiction. And I can see what the, what the IP address is on, on my laptop. If I, if I open up a command prompt, so I'm gonna go to my command prompt here. So here I'm on a Windows 10 system and to get to this command prompt, I would, I would um, you know, go down to the, go down to the, to the search uh, um, in the lower left corner here and I would type in CMD and enter and I get this command prompt and I can see what my uh, IP address is by using the command IP config. So you might write that down. You might see that if, there, if you're ever in some kind of a capture the flag competition or something and, and you're asked a question about what command you use to um, identify the IP address on your Windows 10 computer, it's IP config. And so when I do that, I get a whole bunch of networking information about my particular uh, um, computer. But down here towards the bottom, I see there's this, there's this heading that says wireless LAN adapter Wi-Fi. Right now I'm communicating over Wi-Fi to a wireless access point in my, in my uh, office here. And here's the IP address, 192.168.7.54, right? IPv4 address. And that's, the, that's that representation, the four octets right there. So that's how you find out uh, the IP address on your computer. And you can, you can pause this video right now if you want and check, check and, and see what the IP address is on your computer. And it's, it's likely to be different from mine. Okay, so this is that format, right? It's 32 bits and it's carved up into four sections of eight bits. And so um, uh, you, you can uh, convert those into decimal numbers and, and that's how the, the uh, IP addresses are represented. Oops. Okay, so um, there are some protocols that, that are used um, within the IP layer. There's this, there's this um, protocol called ARP address resolution protocol that's used to um, match up a particular data link layer uh, address with a network layer address. And, and that, that mapping has to be done at some, at some point in the network so that packets get to the right place in the network. And then there's, a, there's a, a protocol called ICMP, Internet Control Message Protocol. And this uh, is, is messages that are sent um, to um, provide information about network conditions between hosts on a, on a particular network. And then very important protocol in this area 
DHCP dynamic host configuration protocol. This is a protocol that um, helps configure IP addresses on various devices in the, in the network. Used to be that we would hand out IP addresses and, and somebody would have to go to each device and configure them to, to give them an IP address. We don't have to do that anymore because we have this protocol called DHCP dynamic host configuration protocol. That's another good CTF question. Okay, and this, this um, uh, slide just gives some information about the IP version four header. So, so each one of these different protocols, um, when, they, when, they, when the packets are formed, there are these headers that are added to the packets and we'll see more of that here in a few minutes. So we're not gonna delve into the details here. The next layer up, we have the transport protocols, transport layer in the protocol stack. And the transport layer delivers data from a process on one host to a process on another host. So, so a process is something like on, on, my, on my computer, if I want to connect to a web server, the process on my host would be a web browser. And the, um, and the um, process on the, the web server is, is the web server software. And there are different you know, there are different types of web server software, but the, the, in general, the, yeah, it's the t kind of software, the process is a web server. Uh, so yeah, so here's my example, Br web browser in your laptop to a web server at nasa.gov maybe. And then port numbers are, are used to get data to the direct process on the host. And there are some standardized port numbers used for some processes. The standardized port numbers for a web server are 80, and that's for HTTP web servers. And then 443 for HTTPS web servers and the S, you've probably seen that before. HTTPS, that's, that's a secure web server. So that's gonna be an encrypted connection to that web server. So you don't see very many TCP port 80s anymore. Most web servers run port 443 and it's these encrypted connections. Transport layer protocols in, include TCP and UDP. TCP is by far the most widely used transport layer protocol. It's used for um, connection oriented uh, um, with reliable delivery sorts of communications. Like if I'm connecting to a web server or if I'm sending receiving emails, I wanna make sure that that data is sent and received, you know, complete with, with, with you know, it, all the, uh, you know, all the bits have to be in the right order and um, they have to, uh, each packet has to arrive in the right sequence. And so most of the internet traffic is, is over TCP. The other protocol is UDP and UDP is a little bit different. It's a connectionless protocol. It's a lot lighter weight, so it doesn't have all this extra um, error checking and um, guaranteed delivery but it's used for streaming sorts of uh, situations where you're streaming uh, um, uh, like a, um, a video teleconference or a, an IP phone call or, you know, things that, um, you know, if you were trying to, if you tried to add all this extra overhead, it would add, um, you know, too much bandwidth to the communication. It would slow it down and you get, you might get this sort of jerky um, video, uh, but um, you can stream data over UDP very efficiently. And so UDP is used for those kinds of streaming applications but this is at the transport layer. Okay, so TCP header. Again, we're not gonna get into these details, but we're gonna look at some TCP headers later on. The important bit of data here is the source and the destination information that's right at the beginning of the header. There's this thing called the th three-way handshake for TCP connections. And so you'll, you'll uh, we'll, we'll take a look at some of these three-way handshakes later when we, when we start actually looking at some um, communications between you know, web servers and web browsers uh, using some special software. And it's this, um, it's this SYN, SYNAC, ACK sort of communication. This, this you know, the client, the web browser sends this uh, packet to the web server and with this SYN uh, um, synchronization flag set and the, and, and the server is going to respond using this acknowledgement flag. So it's got the synchronization flag and the acknowledgement flag back to the web browser or the back, back to the client computer. And then the client's going to respond with this acknowledgement. And now they have this communication uh, uh, you know, line set up so that they can 
send messages back and forth. And then at the end of the communication, they're going to, um, you know, there's going to be a couple of messages that tear down this connection. Okay, and then at the very top, we have the application layer protocols. And these are protocols like the domain name system. This is used to resolve IP address or host names to IP addresses. There's HTTP and HTTPS. Those are used for web page, you know, to get web pages. There are specific protocols for email, protocols like SMTP and POP3. There are um, protocols for remote access to other computers like SSH or, or RDP. And then there are protocols for file transfer between individual computers like FTP. So lots of protocols up at the, app, the application layer. And again, these are plug and play, right? You can, you can, um, you know, if you're going to, the, the, again, the beauty of using this network stack is that at the, at the application layer, you can use HTTP. And then at the transport layer, you can use TCP or maybe, you know, in some cases UDP is going to be used. At the network layer, you can use IP, but you can also use uh, ATM as another network layer protocol. At the data link layer, it might be Wi-Fi or it might be Ethernet. Uh, you, you know, you can use different protocols at different layers, but still the whole the whole hierarchy is going to continue to work. It's not, you know, you don't have to you don't have to replace the entire protocol stack. You just in, you just plug and play different protocols at different layers. And, and that's, the, that's one of the advantages of using this sort of a hierarchical model. And then there's this notion of data encapsulation. And, and um, so at each layer in the protocol hierarchy, when, when messages are sent, there's information that's encapsulated with header data when, it, when, when, when the packet is handed down the, the layers of the protocol. And then those those headers are stripped as the data is handed back up. And I'm going to draw a picture of that here in a minute. Okay, so now I'm going to try to draw a picture of a communication between a web browser and a web server depicting this protocol hierarchy. And so I'm going to start over here on my computer. And I looked at the uh, IP address for my computer, 192.168.7.54. So I'm going to I'm going to put that here, 192.168.7.54. And here on my computer in the operating system, there's this protocol hierarchy, and its physical layer, then data link layer then network layer, then transport layer, then application layer. And up at the top here, the application I'm going to use is a web browser. And I'm going to connect to a web server. And so I'm going to connect to www.wired. We're going to wired.com. And again, on, on the wired.com uh, web server, the operating system there has the same protocol network stack. And this computer is probably a Linux computer. Probably Linux. Almost every, uh, I won't say almost every, uh, most web servers in the internet are Linux operating system. My web browser happens to be on a Windows 10 system. But that doesn't matter, right? The protocol stack is going to be implemented in the operating system. So it doesn't matter if my computer is a different operating system than the web server. Okay, so. Um, So in the middle here is the internet, right? And and is the network, right? So everything from everything from the wireless access point in you know in, uh, in my home office to the switch that this web server is connected to, we're just going to use this cloud um, to to depict this, and and we'll talk more about 
you know, how the, how the cloud work, you know, how, how all this network stuff in the middle works later on. But here I just want to talk about the communication between the web browser and the web server. Okay, so I know my computer is 192.168.7.54. And then there's a, there's a um, web server, www.wired.com. And um, let's see what the, let's see what the, uh, what the IP address is for that. So I'm going to use a, a software utility called NS Lookup, NS Lookup, and NS Lookup uh, uses the domain name system, the DNS system, to uh, map domain names to IP addresses. And that the DNS system is this distributed hierarchical database uh, that is located on systems throughout the internet. And um, and I'm going to look up www.wired.com. And so I did that uh, look up www.wired.com right here. And um, my, my computer used the DNS system and it used, it, it was able to communicate with a DNS server called cdns01.comcast.net. And that web server is at 75.75.75.75. That's not the wired.com web server, that's this DNS server. So that's where I got this IP address information. And here's the answer. The address is 199.232.66.194. That's the IP address of the www.wired.com web server. Okay, so, so, you know, my computer knows that when it, when the browser goes to that website, that's the, that's the IP address of the system on the other end. And, and my computer has to know that in order to connect to that system. Uses the DNS system to find that out. Okay, so here we are on the web browser. The web browser is going to, is going to, um, is, when it asks for the, for the uh, homepage at uh, wired.com, it's going to put together this thing called a network packet. The network packet is um, going to be uh, using a particular protocol at the application layer. The protocol is called HTTP, in this case, HTTPS, right? So the application layer protocol is, is HTTP. So I'm going to draw the packet here in the middle. Okay, so this, this protocol, this message is packaged in the HTTPS protocol. And, um, and that packet is, is specifically going to talk to the web server, right? But it can't just go straight to the web server through the air, right? It's got to go through the network to the web server. So in order for it to go through the network to the web server, it's got to go down to the next layer in the protocol hierarchy. And down here at the, at the, um, transport layer, we're going to use a protocol called TCP, Transport Control Protocol. And the web server, this is where we put port numbers for things, right? So the web server is running on a particular port. It's running on port 443. I'm going to do this in a different color. TCP, it's on port 443. So the, uh, the packet is going to get this TCP header on the front of it. And the header is going to have the source and the destination port numbers. And the destination is 443. And the source is some port number on my computer, on my laptop. Okay, so now that uh, header is put onto the, to the front end of the packet. And now the, the packet is going to get handed down to the network layer. And at the network layer, we're going to use a protocol called IP, Internet Protocol. And we have another header put on the front of this packet. And it's going to have the IP addresses. It's going to have the source address, 192.168.7.54. Destination address is 199.232.66.194. Remember, we just looked that up. I should have written it down here. 232.66.194. And that's going to get that packet from the uh, from my computer to that web server. But before that can happen, the packet has to get handed down another layer to the data link layer because the packet first has to get out of my computer. And the protocol that's going to be used for that is called Wi-Fi. 
Wi-Fi because I'm on a wireless computer here. There's another header put on the front. This is the Wi-Fi header. This is going to have a thing called the MAC address, a medium access control MAC address. And that's a header that's put on the front end of this, of this thing. And down at the physical layer, this is where we have an antenna and a signal that's going to go here and it's going to get received by the network. In this case, it's going to get received by a wireless access point and then the packet's going to get forward through the internet. It's going to go around to some other stuff. And then it's going to come out at a switch on this side. And this switch is a wire that's connected to this computer, www.wired.com. And the network is what gets, you know, this is what gets the packet from this IP address to this IP address. And again, we're going to talk more about how that works later on, but, but trust me that um, the, the network um, works in IP addresses and it's going to make sure the packet gets to the right IP address. So here at the physical layer, we have, we, we have bits coming off a wire and up here at the data link layer, this computer is running a protocol called Ethernet. So it doesn't matter that my computer used Wi-Fi and the, the receiving web server uses Ethernet. It doesn't matter. Remember these, these protocol layers are, you can unplug one protocol and plug in another and, and this all still works the way you want it to work. So I get the Ethernet um, packet. And so what the web server does is now, now it, got, it got the packet from the physical layer, right? It came off the wire, handed it up to, to the data link layer, and the data link layer is going to read this Ethernet header and then it's going to strip this thing off. Okay, and then, it, and then it's going to, um, it says, okay, this packet is for me. I'm going to hand the packet up to the network layer. And same thing, right? I'm going to strip this off. And it's going to say, okay, um, this packet is, is, you know, this IP address is, is the correct IP address. So now I'm going to hand the packet up to the transport layer. The transport layer is going to say, okay, this thing is destined for port 443. That is the web server. And so now I'm going to hand that packet up to the web server that happens to communicate using HTTPS. And the web server is going to receive the, at that point, you know, this gets stripped off at that point. Now the web server finally gets this HTTPS packet. It can read the packet and it can say, okay, th this web browser was requesting a web page from me. And so now the web server is going to take that request. It's going to find that web page on, on its file system. It's going to package it in a new. So now the web server is going to create a new HTTPS packet with that web page in it. And then it's gonna hand it down the protocol layers. And, it's, and when that happens, these headers are gonna get added to the packet at each layer. And this packet is gonna go back through the network. And then as the packet is handed back up, then those headers are gonna get stripped off one by one. And at the application layer, this packet is gonna get handed to the web browser and the web browser is going to see that that's the web page that it was requested, and it's going to display that web page on the web browser. Okay, and that is that is uh, um, hopefully a, a relatively understandable picture of how these protocol layers work together. Again, there's uh, there, there's uh, um, you know some details left out, particularly the details around the the. Uh, you know, how the packet gets from one end of the network to the other. And we'll talk about that in a later session. So thanks. And I look forward to continuing this session on computer networks next time.